Welcome to the SNN Network Canada virtual event. I'd like to introduce our next presenter, Matt Laurie, CEO of Organic Garage. Sir, the floor is yours. That's great. Thanks everybody for attending today's presentation. I am super excited to tell you everything about Organic Garage and what we're up to. My name is Matt Lurie. I'm the President, CEO, and Founder. And today during uh, the presentation, we're going to try and divide it up kind of 50-50. Uh, I'm going to try and get through the deck in about 15 minutes to leave uh, about 15 minutes for Q&A because I'm, I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions. So during today's presentation, we're going to talk about four key components, who we are, for those of you that don't know, what we've accomplished to date, where we are currently, and where we're going as a company. So we'll start off with who we are. So for those of you that don't know, uh, like I said, my name is Matt Lurie. I'm the president, uh, CEO, and founder of Organic Garage. I'm a fourth generation grocer. Organic Garage is uh, an organic and all natural uh, grocery chain located in the uh, Toronto and greater Toronto area. Uh, we've been in business approximately 15 years. And I always like to call back to this slide to make sure that people understand that there is a his history and a lineage. This photo actually hangs in a prominent location in all our location, in all our stores. And it's actually of my grandfather and his two brothers in front of their College Street store in downtown Toronto uh, in the early 1950s. Uh, they had immigrated from Poland just before World War II and settled in Toronto, like most, you know, immigrant families, and uh, started a small grocerieria. So I like to, we always like to remind people that there is a family story behind our business. There is a lineage. We're not some unknown unnamed, unfaced uh, corporation. Um, in terms of, uh, of what makes us different, we always get asked, you know, how do you insulate yourself from competition? It's a competitive market. And I always, you know, kind of uh, prescribe to the Warren Buffett economic moat theory. What insulates your business from either existing competition or new competition? And these four key bedrocks are what set, make us different and help separate us from our competition our brand, our environment, our product selection, and our value proposition. So to start off, our brand, and you'll see some photos um, in the next few slides, but I'll just touch on this first. Our brand is very on trend. Uh, we have a very direct and blunt communication message. Um, you'll see from some of the photos in terms of the style of, of our signage. Um, it's very transparent, um, which is what a lot of consumers are looking for these days. They don't want corporate speak. And so we've taken a very edgy, kind of hip and cool sense to our brand that's really resonated with customers. The environment in which we sell our products is kind of an industrial urban chic environment. It's utilizing natural materials, uh, concrete floors, exposed ceiling, you know, brick, reclaimed wood, metal, uh, kind of like an industrial vibe to it. And what it does is it creates a very comfortable and kind of cozy feel, market-based kind of inspiration inside the store. Our product selection, so we carry eight to 10,000 SKUs. We cover every category uh, that a shopper would want. Our produce is 100% certified organic. We do not carry any conventional produce. And our products, you know, align with what customers are looking for. And we always say in some of our signage, we, we read the label so the customer doesn't have to. They can come into our store and shop every category and not be concerned because we vet everything through something we call the dump it list where we're vetting ingredients to ensure that all the products, you know, align with our, our values and principles. And you, you don't find that in conventional grocery stores where, you know, a lot of organic and natural brands are mixed in with conventional, and it can create a lot of confusion with customers. And then finally, one of the biggest, and you'll see from our logo, you know, we really emphasize our value proposition. So Organic Garage was built on the bedrock of applying the discount principles that the large grocery chains apply to their discount banners, which was smaller store formats, simplified labor, highly rationalized skew base, and pass all those operational and negotiated savings down to the customer with everyday low pricing. And that leads us to be 18 to 24% cheaper than somebody like a Whole Foods, uh, uh, 12 to 15% cheaper than, uh, you know, any other natural competing uh, health food chain, and 8 to 12% cheaper than any national chain. So we'll just switch, and I'll quickly scan through these, but you'll get to see kind of the environment in our stores. Uh, you'll see kind of the materials that we use, some of the fun signage, um, and just the overall look and feel of the store. You also see some of the fun things we do in the store here, communication messages, fun signs. This all speaks back to the brand and the unique environment inside our stores that helps separate us from our competition. So what do we uh, – and some more signage and, and different uh, – 
call outs. We have a, a flyer that we do and just different things that we do inside the store. And so what have we accomplished to date? Uh, so right now we have four locations. We have two in the Toronto area, one in Oakville, one in Vaughan. Uh, you know, we have uh, 25 to $30 million a year in revenue. So we are not a startup by any sense of the means. We have a very solid revenue base. Um, and then we'll touch on uh, near the end of the presentation, which is very exciting. We acquired a plant-based cheese manufacturer called the Future of Cheese, which allows us to access a, a, a different but parallel kind of uh, vertical that is exciting to the overall growth of our business. So where are we now? Like I said, I touched on it. There's some good financials here, but we're a 25 to $30 million a year company. We have a very tight cap uh, structure in terms of shares outstanding. Uh, approximately a quarter of that is owned by insiders. We have very little debt on our books. We have no chartered bank debt. So it is a very lean company, and we're sitting on one of the highest cash positions we've ever had in the company, between 2 and $3 million. So we're in a very good uh, position to execute on our short-term business objectives, which I'll touch on in a second, with where are we going as a company. So where are we going as a company? So we identified during COVID, uh, I'm sure all of you uh, know, you know, uh, grocery was a pandemic-proof business and essential service uh, that was kept open during the entire pandemic and created a lot of renewed interest in grocery and retail. And so we've seen a ton of interest from real estate agents, landlords, and developers looking for uh, not only grocery anchors to their development, but unique grocery. And that is exactly what we fit. They're tired of the same old big three companies being in every development, and they want something different for their clientele. This uh, slide just helps capture, uh, we do do online delivery. We have a partnership through Instacart. It shows uh, we were one of the few retailers during COVID that had an online delivery service beside the big chains. Uh, we, we were written up in, in like blog TO and different online mediums. And so uh, realizing the potential for uh, online delivery, we signed a deal with Instacart. Uh, and you'll see the difference in the coverage zones between what we had previously and what we now have with Instacart. So we're covering the majority of the Ontario market as we continue to roll out bricks and mortar stores. Just touching on the growth potential, this slide touches on uh, a market analysis that we did that clearly shows that Ontario can support between 20 and 30 organic garages. It's a very simple, scalable business. Our stores average uh, and our goal going forward is around 10,500 square feet, which is easily attainable in the Ontario market. Um, we've seen a lot of businesses go out of business, unfortunately, during COVID. That could be a general merchandise store, like a clothing store. It could even be like buffets um, that have gone out. They all hover in that 10 to 12,000 square foot range. And so I always like to say that the space we're looking for is too big for the small guys and too small for the big guys. So it puts us in a real great space to uh, capitalize on what's going on in the market and uh, grow very rapidly. Um, so I just want to uh, touch on, obviously, I mentioned we have two verticals to our business. One is our grocery retail business. One is our CPG uh, side of our business. Both are very exciting and have high growth potential. Um, and so we acquired the future of cheese earlier this, this year um, and identified an opportunity to provide an increased and enhanced shareholder value. Um, with what's going on in the plant-based space, it is extremely hot, not only in the consumer side um, with people, uh, you know, changing their eating tr uh, and dietary trends um, towards plant-based, but definitely in the financial markets with the interest going on with companies like Beyond Meat and, Meat and things like that. And so we saw a unique opportunity with not only a fabulous product, uh, but uh, uh, just an absolute, you know, stellar management team, which I'll touch on in a second. So the two co-founders, Afrin Pristine and Craig Harding, have excellent resumes. Afrin Pristine is uh, uh, Canada's first and one of the youngest maitre uh, fromagers in the world. It's, a, it's a, a title bestowed by the country of France to master cheesemakers. Afrin uh, has just recently had a very successful show on the Food Network, traveling the world talking about cheese. So when you talk about getting an expert in their business, you can't ask for somebody better than Afrin Pristine. And then Craig Harding, the second co-founder, also has been featured on the Food Network, is corporate chef to companies like American Express and BMW, um, has owned several successful restaurants that have been written up. Um, so helps provide a culinary execution to the products that they're developing to ensure they execute from the customer side. 
And so we recently launched products into the market in early October. We started with two butter SKUs called the Future of Butter. It is a plant-based unsalted and salted butter that was very well received um, by retailers. We did a local launch here. And we just recently, in the last week, launched the third SKU, which was a plant-based brie, uh, which has been also very, very successful with the launch. We've decided um, for the launch of the products to focus domestically on the Toronto and greater Toronto market to start with a curated list of retailers um, so that we can keep a tight control over production and sell through. And then the goal is early in the new year, uh, we're looking on signing on a co-packer to be able to scale the business um, nationally across Canada and then internationally into the U.S. market and potentially even Europe. The potential on the plant-based side is very, very large. Uh, to give you an example, a plant-based butter market is expected to grow, and it says there between uh, one and two billion um, U.S. Uh, not just on the plant-based butter side, uh, not to mention the other SKUs that we're developing. The goal is to grow the business to eight to ten SKUs, uh, which we're, we're moving quickly towards that goal, and we anticipate to hopefully hit that in the first quarter of next year uh, before we look at launching into the U.S. so that we have a good amount of SKUs to help penetrate the U.S. market. Um, in terms of verticals, uh, you know, in terms of long-term growth strategy, like I mentioned with Organic Garage, uh, we could easily grow to 20 to 30 locations in Ontario, our average sales per store for our financial model is around $6 million a store. So if we hit our goal of 30 stores, you're talking about $180 to $200 million a year business. Um, parallel to that, uh, for those of you that follow the grocery sector, you've seen a lot of consolidation going on in Canada uh, with the big three retailers, Loblaws, Sobeys, and Metro. Um, they've shown an appetite to acquire boutique grocery chains, and Organic Garage is exactly that. Sobeys recently did two acquisitions in the last 12 months with Farm Boy, who they purchased for $800 million, and Longos, who they bought a 51% stake, I think, for four to $500 million. Both were in the specialty food space um, and access unique segments of the market. Um, we fit into that space. Organic and natural is one of the few segments of the grocery sector that is growing double digits. And so there's a lot of interest in what's happening in organic and natural. And so we see the potential of us uh, being an acquisition target if we so choose in the future, or we'll continue to grow at our business and reach the potential here in Ontario before we evaluate potentially other markets in Canada, such as British Columbia. On the future of cheese side, same thing. There is a ton of potential for us to grow the business, not only domestically, not only nationally, uh, but internationally as well. Um, and so there's lots of runway for, for growth there. However, also parallel to that, there has been a ton of consolidation in the plant-based food space with the large dairy conglomerates uh, looking to acquire plant-based companies to diversify their holdings. You, I can point to several transactions that have happened in the last 12 to 15 months. Uh, Danon acquired a company called Earth Island Foods, who we sell currently in our stores um, out of California. It was a private transaction, but I can tell you that it was likely a sizable one given the size of Earth Island. Um, and Danon did that because they have a mandate to diversify their portfolio and generate, I think, up to $5 billion in plant-based food sales over the next, you know, five years. Um, Saputo uh, also acquired a company out of Scotland called Shees. Uh, we carry their brand. Um, it's, it's a, the acquisition was their corporate company is called Boot Island Foods. Um, and so uh, they acquired that company and another company. Um, they didn't separate them out uh, separately, but they acquired both of them, I think, for around 150 to 180 million. Uh, once again, because the Danon, Saputos, Yoplays of the world are all trying to diversify their dairy-based holdings and access the plant-based space, and they're looking for acquisitions. And uh, Future Cheese could be one of those, especially given Afram, one of the co-founders' connections, with the cheese market uh, because he's one of the largest importers, especially cheese in Canada. So he has those connections if and when we choose to, uh, you know, enter into that conversation. And <coughs> excuse me. So both companies, <coughs> excuse me, as um, you can see, have tremendous growth potential, whether we grow it so-called organically, uh, so to speak, um, ourselves and scale the business up or whether we are a potential acquisition target for either side of the business sometime in the future. Um, both have tons of runway for growth, and growth is the name of the game in the public markets, and so it should lead to lots of excitement, um, and we're super excited about our, our growth trajectory. 
I know it was a, a rush to get through the, uh, the, plat the uh, presentation, but I do want to get to the Q&A. Once again, happy to do any follow-ups with anybody on the call. You can reach out to our investor relations. The contact is there for you guys to see and look forward to continuing the conversation with all of you um, if you want further details. So just open up to uh, the q and I'll read off a few questions here for the next 15, 20 minutes. Um, so first off, we have one question. So what is your vision for the company in the next 12 months? Where, are we, where would we like to be? Um, we uh, will definitely have announcements regarding to new location growth. Uh, we engaged uh, one of uh, the world's uh, largest real estate firms, Savills, uh, to uh, go out to the market and start to engage with uh, landlords and real estate agents and developers. We sent out a press release over the next last 30 days announcing the markets we're looking to grow in, and they got inundated with uh, potential sites, so we're working on sifting through those. Uh, so we look forward to having several announcements regarding that uh, potentially. And then on the plant-based food side, we will definitely be hitting that 8 to 10 SKU range uh, with uh, signing on a co-packer. That is our, our short-term goals to allow us to scale the business nationally and then to start to, to prepare us for potentially an international entry into uh, the U.S. And so I see over the next 12 months, if we were to forecast out into next fiscal year, hopefully we'll have at least a few new location um, announcements uh, to fill up our pipeline over the next you know, uh, 24 to 36 months. Some sites are available immediately. Some sites will be new. That will take time to develop, but we're looking at filling that pipeline. And then our plant-based cheese business, um, you know, we'll have our 8 to 10 SKUs. We'll definitely be, uh, you know, in select retailers across Canada, and if not, being very close to penetrating the U.S. market. Uh, second question, so how soon do you think you could get to 20 to 30 store target that we have in Ontario? Would you expand beyond Ontario before reaching that target? Um, very simply, uh, uh, new location growth is predicated on available real estate, so it's hard to predict timing. What I have seen in the past um, happen is, uh, stores can come in large uh, batches together. Once you get the ball rolling on interest on new stores, things can happen very rapidly in terms of filling up a pipeline. And so I think we want to be prudent uh, financially um, in terms of, you know, what capital we may need, uh, what are we raising at, and we're not going to unnecessarily dilute our company, but um, we want to be prepared for the potential of growing very rapidly. And so it's hard to peg an exact timeline only I can say is, is that we're actively looking to fill our pipeline um, of, of new stores. And then in terms of, you know, expanding outside of Ontario, um, we are always open to discussing with uh, potential partnerships um, with retailers. Uh, it could be outside of even Canada. We've had conversations in the past with people um, from Europe who, who were looking for kind of licensing and things like that. And so uh, we're always open to opportunities. We'll always do something that we feel can enhance shareholder value and ensure brand integrity. Um, but I think our focus right now, given the runway for growth in Ontario from a physical of, of us opening stores, our focus is Ontario. is the largest market in Canada. It makes sense for us to continue to grow in this market. Uh, third question here, how do you plan on dealing with competition from large brands and large-scale grocers launching their own plant-based dairy alternatives? Well, simply put, um, the plant-based space is still very brand loyal. So it hasn't gone to the state of private label uh, as big as like, uh, you know, non-plant-based brands, just because people um, are very attached to who the brand is, what do they stand for, and what are their values. Um, so we still see a lot of brand loyalty um, rather than just, you know, white label um, products. So we're not concerned about, you know, our other you know, large grocers launching their own plant-based products. Future of Cheese was acquired and is kept as uh, a wholly owned subsidiary of Organic Garage. It has its own management team. And so while Organic Garage carries their products, um, the products are sold to other retailers um, because Organic Garage doesn't sell it to them. Um, Future of Cheese does through a distributor. And so we don't see any concern with grocers launching their own products because we'll fit in with their products uh, just like any other product. Um, so we're very excited. Uh, the adoption of the product has been phenomenal, and we continue to scale up, and interest just continues to grow exponentially. Um, I have another question. So how do you control sh uh, short product life for your organic-only uh, inventory? So just to be clear, so our produce is 100% certified organic, but the rest of the store is organic and all natural. And so everything is vetted through our ingredient list to ensure that it doesn't contain things like 
artificial flavors, preservatives, what, what we call the stuff you want to dump in the toilet, you know, like that's not the stuff you want in your food or, you know, household products or products you put on your skin and hair and stuff. And so, um, you know, when it comes to organic produce, um, I always like to say, look, the market has evolved. Uh, the product is only continuing to gain in terms of its quality and shelf life because you have, you know, billion dollar companies growing product uh, organically given its popularity. And so we're not, we're not concerned about short shelf life. We deal with dating related issues just like any conventional product does. Um, products have different dating, but I wouldn't say organic and natural products have a substantially less shelf life than uh, their conventional counterparts. It's only really a little bit on the produce side, but we're very careful in terms of how we buy. And it's, uh, you know, it's hand to mouth, so to speak. We keep our stores tight in terms of the inventory that we have uh, inside the stores. Um, we have another question. Do you supply commercial business such as restaurants and catering businesses? Uh, very exciting. If, if, you know, good question. If you did happen to see our press release uh, early this morning about um, the product for the future of cheese launching into restaurants, we've had a couple of high profile restaurants immediately put it on their menu and we're continuing to have exciting conversations with numerous different businesses on the food service side um, in terms of partnerships and getting the product into a high profile locations to help build and continue to build the brand. Um, we will continue to look at that uh, as we look towards getting a co-packer because um, it will allow us to have more industrial sizing. Um, right now, uh, you know, restaurants are using kind of the retail package product um, in their restaurants, which, you know, serves for now, but not for the long term. So we look forward to growing that business as we, you know, shift into a, kind of a co-packer relationship. And then lastly, uh, uh, we have another question. Um, do you plan to own or operate our own vertical uh I guess, farming business? Um, no, uh, we keep our business lean and mean. And I always like to say, we focus on what we do and we want to do it well. We're not interested in getting into other things that we don't know or don't do well. And for those of you that want to follow up with um, separate meetings, we could have a whole conversation about our, our unique program called the Handpicked Partner Program, which kind of touches on that in terms of linking up with quality businesses to augment our core offer in our grocery stores with categories that we don't want to own. And so we've created some great partnerships in the specialty cheese space, um, like baked goods, um, prepared foods, uh, you know, cold pressed juices and things like that with businesses that um, kind of operate inside of our business. And we take a, a portion of their uh, sales to cover, you know, the space that they occupy. It allows us to leverage their expertise in terms of what they know best um, and allows us to focus on what we do best, which is op operating a core of a grocery store. However, we have had conversations with lots of different um, kind of, um, you know, kind of these small scale farming um, initiatives that are, are happening, like out of uh, like uh, uh, containers and things like that, like utilizing uh, things like that. And once again, um, some of them are challenged because they can't get certification for being organic and because uh, we're adamant about only selling certified organic produce, there are certain limitations. However, as the, the market continues to evolve, um, it would be fun to link up with different companies in that space to offer their products in our store. But once again, I always like to say, we're not farmers. I'm a grocery retailer. I got retail in my blood and it's what I want to focus on and what we do well. Um, I want to leave farming to farmers because they know it best. And same thing, I want to leave, you know, we have sushi kiosks in our store and I want to leave the sushi kiosk uh, to the people who know it best, which is the sushi operators. Um, what we want is, is to take a, a small cut of those sales um, because they're inside of our store and we need to profit from it. Um, but it doesn't mean that I need to enter into vet verticals that we potentially don't, you know, don't know very well. Um, but once again, that's a whole other conversation. I'd love to continue it, um, you know, with one-on-one -on -one meetings if anybody um, wants to reach out. Um, just a few more uh, questions. Um, what is the biggest challenge you face as a company? Uh, look, there's always challenges in the food business. Um, we've, we've seen it over the last, you know, 18 to 24 months, whether it's dealing with, you know, a pandemic being COVID and seeing our shelves, 
emptied, uh, whether it's, um, you know, existing challenges regarding supply chain uh, and labor challenges. The one beauty about our business is, number one, because we are focused on the principles of a discounter, we are a low labor operator, which means we can open our stores with three people, one cashier, one produce clerk, one grocery clerk, and we can close it with three people, one cashier, one produce clerk, one grocery clerk. So we don't have to have 150 people in all our stores and worry about how we're going to staff every department. Um, so that helps alleviate some of that strain. doesn't mean that we don't feel the strain like every other business um, that's experiencing right now, but it, it lessens that risk. Um, so like I said, I wouldn't want identify one significant challenge. I would say over the 15 years we've been in business, we've seen numerous challenges, and you know, uh, you know, our goal is to hit the curveballs as fast as they come in. And like I said, I, I can only speak during our time during COVID. We had no outbreaks and no store closures, um, and hopefully that gives you a taste of how we've managed things and how our team works together. Uh, a few more questions. What uh, would you as our international expansion for your future cheese company look like, and how would you market your products in those much larger markets? Um, very simply, the key to U.S. or international expansion is linking up with a few like-minded retailers that help target the customer that we want. And so in the U.S., that could be somebody um, like a Sprouts. It could be somebody, obviously, like a Whole Foods. Um, and there's definitely select retailers in the European market that are very much the same. And then usually the market grows from there through word of mouth and expansion. Um, so I have no concerns uh, about marketing our products. We don't need to have extensive marketing um, budgets to promote the product, given the rise of social media. Um, and um, the two co-founders, Afrin Pristine and Craig Harding, have an extensive social media following, and once again, have huge media contacts, whether here locally or you know internationally. Like I said, both have been on the the, uh, um, the TV, being the Food Network. So uh, you can't ask for better spokespeople, and I, I would hate to, to hesitate what the cost would be to find or pay for spokespeople like we have with Afrim and Craig um, being out there and being vocal proponents of, of the company. Um, a few other questions. Uh, what do the synergies between your organic garage business and your future cheese business look like? Uh, look, I always like to mention to people who ask, well, why did you get into a CPG business when you're a bricks and mortar retailer? And I always like to remind people two things. One, we have an obligation to existing or new shareholders to look for opportunities to provide enhanced shareholder value. And so we're always looking at the market. And the, the, the vertical that we got into is a vertical we know well. It's not like we bought a, a mine in Uganda or a blockchain business. We bought a plant-based food business. Why? Because we know that side of the business well. Plant-based products uh, um, basically launch in companies like Organic Garage. We're at the epicenter of the plant-based food movement uh, because they launch in companies like Organic Garage before they go into mass uh, because we have the clientele that, that serves their primary market. And so we get to see trends and things before, you know, they get very big. So it gives us a unique insight into that side of the business and to capture those opportunities. And like I said, when, when this opportunity came along, not only with a, a stellar product, but an outstanding management team, it was too good an opportunity to pass up to provide our shareholders with a chance to access what is an extremely hot space right now. Um, a couple other questions. Are you adding vitamins, nutrace uh, nutraceutical products? A good question. As, uh, as I mentioned, we already have vitamins uh, and supplements in our stores. We touch every category. Our stores have in it produce, dairy, bakery, meat, frozen foods, an entire grocery spectrum, everything from juice to pet food to laundry detergent to candy to chips, and then health and beauty, um, you know, shampoos, oral care items, feminine hygiene to vitamins and supplements and prepared foods and bulk. It is literally a one-stop shop. Um, so we touch every category. People can come in and do a full shop in our stores. So great question, um, and we, we already carry the products. Um, yeah, that just about wraps us up. We're coming to the end here. I'd just like to thank everybody for listening um, to you know, our exciting story. I'm super excited about the direction we're going in. Um, we have great verticals to capture growth in the next uh, 12 months with lots of things in the pipeline. I look forward to you reaching out to our investor relation teams to continue conversations one-on-one. -on -one. So once again, thank you very much. Have yourself a great day and look forward to continuing the conversation.